with a Rocky 50. It's a 50 mile trail run that my sister Megan and I are going to be doing together tomorrow. It's got a 6 a.m. start. So we are getting into Huntsville today. Going to get checked into our hotel and go pick up our packets, go to the race briefing, just get some information about the race. And number three is just to have fun, which that maybe should be goal number one, but just ready and excited to get things going. So let's see, we're about an hour and a half out from Huntsville. I'm on these country roads here in Texas, and um, yeah, it's about 1242, should be getting in about 215. From there, we'll check into the hotel, then we'll head out to the race briefing. Headquarters. I get to be the race director of the Rocky Raccoon, and a super big honor. I'm the third race director of this event. We're at the 26th year of it, so I'm only 36. So I did not start this when I was 10 years old. Um, so, but uh, it's a huge gift and a big honor for me to get to hang out with you guys and help make this thing happen. And I am not uh, taking credit because um, we've had over 300 plus people making the Rocky Raccoon and the Rocky 50 happen. So, um, so there's a few people I want to make sure you guys know about. And uh, I'm going to go through a handful of things that hopefully answer your questions. And then if not, uh, at the end, then I'll do a Q&A for those that uh, think of something that I missed. Okay? That sound good? Good plan? And then after that, you guys go somewhere else, go to sleep, wake up, run 50 miles or kilometers, and it's all good. Saturday morning, we are up, about to eat a bagel, peanut butter, some coffee, get the day started. So quick gear rundown, so I've got my Zoot shorts that I love, big number 31, got this t-shirt, it seems kind of like cotton polyester mix, which I know you're not supposed to wear cotton, but I've worn this for every ultra I've done, it's a Drew Holcomb, and it just, and the neighbor's shirt that Chad got me, fits perfectly, I love it. So that's what I'm gonna wear. I've got this Fleet Feet Monroe long sleeve shirt. Probably won't wear that actually in the run, but just going to wear that at the start. It's like 60 degrees, so it's pretty warm. Got this Boko hat that I'm planning to wear. It works perfectly with the headlamp. Uh, got my headlamp because it's gonna be dark for the first hour or so. Although I may wear this North Face hat. It is water repellent and it's raining right now. So as you can see, this is like just mesh and so my head would just get soaked so I might wear this North Face hat. Either way, probably change out of that once I get the headlamp off. I've got another hat in my bag that I normally wear. I've got a handheld water bottle, got my Garmin uh, Vivo Active Watch, got some Ziploc baggies. I'm gonna put my phone in one of these and I have one that's just a trash bag if I need to put gel wrappers or anything in there in between aid stations trash cans. Then I've got my Innovate hat. So in here I've got, I'm not going to necessarily go through all this, but I've got a couple different gels stuck in here, some toasted marshmallow and espresso flavored gels. I've got a cup to cupless race. So if you want to drink anything that needs to be poured into a cup, they don't have cups. So I've got this little Solomon cup that I like. It folds down flat and easy. In here, and I'll stick my phone in this front pocket too, in this baggie because it's raining. Got a little uh, Sour Patch Kid pretzel food mix, and then some chapstick and some base salt, and that's pretty much it for the pack. In the back, I've got just some toilet paper that I can use, like hopefully no emergencies, uh, but to blow my nose or anything like that. 
Um, got a poncho just in case it's raining at the beginning while we're just there getting set up. Got a hat that I'm gonna change into. Let's see, this uh, marquee triathlon hat that I really like. Fits well. And then I think the only other thing I have in here. Oh, I've got a baggie full of like Tums, Pepto Bismol. Because sometimes, I mean, you just don't know what your stomach's gonna do. And then this Innovate rain jacket which is super lightweight. I don't really plan to wear it, but I will if I need to, but it's super, super lightweight and it packs down really small. So that's everything I've got in the back of here. I'm gonna put some stuff for Megan too. All right, other thing I'm bringing is a drop bag full of food. So I've got a couple of Incrustables, Pringles, more gels, change of clothes if I need to, if my you know, clothes get soaked. This will be at the halfway mark, so about 25. Um, got some Cokes, Red Bull, more pretzels, uh, just different stuff. Definitely won't use all that, but I have it in this bag. My Tuesday Iron Man drawstring bag has a change of clothes for the after race. Complete change of clothes um, is always fun to change into. So that's the gear rundown. I'm gonna eat my breakfast, get the shower, and then we're gonna head out in about 45 minutes. So really excited, looking forward to the race. Okay, 509. Ready here, to rock. Here at Huntsville State Park. It's currently raining, but warm. Very warm. <laughs> Not much more to say. <laughs> we recorded this whole long thing yesterday and I had accidentally deleted it, but so quick recap of that is I basically said it yesterday that I have three goals for today. Number one, to finish. Number two, no crying. And number three, to have fun. And so I asked Megan if you have any goals for today. Yeah, number one is you no know, tripping, falling, you know, breaking ankles. Um, number two, to get a good hugging picture at the end. So at Ironman Texas, we did, you know, the arms raised together, um, so to get a good picture. And uh, number three is to just enjoy the experience. Even though it's kind of rainy, that should clear out. So to just, you know, when it gets tough, just say, this is what you signed up for. This is what you want. This is what you trained for. Uh, and enjoy it and have fun. You know, it's basically just an hour. I mean, no, not an hour. Uh, just a day <laughs> to spend together out, you know, in a beautiful park and enjoying the day. About nine miles in. Tim, almost ten miles. In. Almost ten miles. Leaving the aid station, feeling good. Uh, it's been really rainy, muddy, but it's a beautiful day. Starting to be clear. Here's the trail ahead of us. Just a beautiful morning at Huntsville State Park. But we're just ate a little, so walking it off. Yeah, it just ate some Pringles, peanut butter jelly sandwich, had some Red Bull. So I'm feeling good, but we're good. Checking back in a little bit. All right, okay. quick change. We're 25 miles in. Halfway there. Halfway there. But it's hurt. We're hurting, but not too bad. We can do it. That's crooked. We just changed shirts. Socks. Socks. We're just soaking wet, but now it feels good being in fresh clothes. Just I gotta watch what I'm doing. Just drink Coke, Red Bull. PB and J. A little bit out of it. We got 25 miles down, 25 to go. Right on pace. <laughs> so it took us right about six hours. So we're hoping six, six and a half for the next bit. Yep. Right now I'm thinking about a milkshake. From Whataburger in the hot tub in our hotel room. That's all I can think about. Yeah. All right, check back. Yes.
Uh, hey, Megan. Oh, how's it going? I'm good. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Just tired. I just feel like my like a brain fog. A brain fog. Overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Overwhelming fatigue. Yeah. Well, I can't imagine driving back last night. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit to drive too, but I was, you know, I just kind of came and I was able to, you know, had I been driving, that I, that would not have happened. Yeah. Okay, so we finished, which I'm very proud of us for doing that because it was incredibly challenging, hard, much harder than I thought. Was that harder than you thought it was going to be? It felt harder. It, it was it was harder only because I didn't think we would be doing anything in the dark. And so once it started getting, you know, the sun was going down and it started getting really dark. That's when I was thinking, oh my gosh, because you know, a mile, it's 15 minutes at least at that point. So you do even five miles from the finish, that's over an hour. So it was uh, daunting. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing is we, it, it only got dark, and when I think we had like less than four miles to go, but that did seem to be one of the longest stretches of the whole race. So we finished in 1309, but probably that last hour was the longest, and the probably first, the five miles before that, we were like booking it because we just kind of had this renewed energy of like, okay, we are almost to the finish. But then when it got dark, it was kind of like all that just went away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't think it, it was never hard physically. I don't think it, you know, I don't, I can't go on. But mentally, you're just like, I am so done with this. I just want to get these shoes off. Um, so, I, you know, mentally it was tough, but physically I think we were both fine. Yeah, physically I was hurting pretty early on and I, I just knew it was just gonna hurt and so I kind of resigned myself to that but like you said mentally I just that, at no point during it could I ever even imagine being done <laughs> and I felt like yeah. we were just gonna be doing that forever so it's such a relief to be done but I was thinking about I was watching some of the footage of your three goals number one was to not fall <laughs> And you did fall yeah. twice. Um, <laughs> thankfully, none of them were really bad. But you did fall. And then our number two was to get a, a hugging picture of the finish line. That didn't happen. Right. <laughs> and then number three was just to enjoy it and have fun. And I think that did happen. So one of the three accomplished. Um, my three goals were number one, to finish, which we did. Number two to not cry, which I did did not cry, even though I was kind of close a few times, but like at weird times. And I, yeah, I don't think I'm, yeah, the one time I thought I might cry was, was knowing that we were gonna see my bed and crystal at the Nature Center um, aid station, which was about a little over three miles to the finish. And I just thought, I'm probably gonna burst into tears as soon as I see them. But luckily I didn't, but just at the time, it was just like, that was kind of a, you know, shining light at the end of a, a tunnel to look yes. forward to. I, I felt the same way because when we called them and kind of realized where they were and where we were and how they could come into the park and hit that aid station and see us before going on to the finish line, we called and we're like, hey, you know, if y'all want to just, as soon as you come into park, to the park, there's basically an aid station to your right. And that was at a low point for us, for me. So I was kind of like thinking, I'm definitely going to cry when I see them because I'll just be so relieved. But then we we really picked it up and we're feeling good when we saw them. And so neither of us cried. <laughs> but yeah. But then it's it interesting too because as soon as it got dark within five minutes, and that's when it kind of unraveled, which to unravel in the last three miles I mean that's pretty good <laughs> yeah and I think if it had been light and we could have seen it, it would have made a big difference I mean we did we had the headlamp I used your phone uh, so we I mean we could see but it was nothing like we didn't really had it been, like, we would, had it been, yeah had it, had it been like we would have run the whole way 
Yeah, because when we when we first started, the first hour was in the dark, but there were so many people and so many headlamps, and you, it was so easy to follow, and everything was so lit up, it wasn't hard, but this was literally just the two of us, and it was kind of scary, there were like animal noises, you couldn't see. Yeah, it was just pitch black, and you could see a foot in front of you, you know, whatever, the, the headlamp illuminated. Yeah, that was during that moment and several points during the re- the run. I thought I never, ever want to do a hundred miler <laughs> because I can't imagine running through the night. I can't. I mean, the just sort of the the mental and emotional fatigue of the day. I was like, I just I can't. I could not do that t- again. And I think right. going into something like that, you have to like. 100% want to do it to do the training and do the event and that squashed that for me even to and do so, it yeah and I kept to for, for the 50 I kept saying you know all right you know you know if you're going to be running for 10 to 12 let's say you know, you know 10 to 14 hours but just that you're going to be running for 34 hours it's a whole nother thing and it part of it I was thinking about too I was like so many people do 100 milers, you know, why can't, why can't I? So I, I feel like I could do it. It's just going to take me a while to want to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, why do I want to do it just to say I've done it and to be kind of in that club of people who've done 100 miles or because I really want to do it and see if I can push myself. And I think right now the main motivation would be just to say I've done it kind of like as a pride thing but that's not enough yeah for me but it did renew my desire to do an Ironman because I was like we were out there really about the amount of time I think we could do an Ironman between 13 14 hours on a good day Mm -hmm. but you're changing it up with the swim and the bike this was just straight running for 13 hours it was so hard on the legs and the feet my feet <laughs> are horrific <laughs> i'm just being so wet for so long you changed socks halfway through uh, and i probably yeah. should have Which, yeah and uh, just on my respect I could avoid the puddles i had you know fashion i kind of do okay which ones are bad and how to get around them so I really had like a three hour feet, which you did not have. So I think that made a big difference. Because my feet are totally fine. I've got like dirt and mud like embedded and all my toenails, but but no blisters. Oh my god. No loss of skin. <laughs> oh man, mine are bad. I've got blisters, calluses, blood blisters all along the bottom of my left foot. Just one giant blood blister. And then, but uh, you should soak your feet in Epsom salt. That's what Peyton told me to do. That's what I'm gonna do at home. She said it's like an antibacterial to get all that yeah. blood and stuff out. So, uh, but I'm so glad we did it. It was definitely a challenge. The weather though, like right now it's 30 degrees. And, I, and yesterday we lucked out. It was 65 degrees when it started, I think. And- Yeah, I thought we got up to like 75. Yeah, it got pretty warm, and then it did start to get cold as kind of a cold front moved through, and it rained a little bit, and then when it got dark, it got cold. But like you said, neither, we weren't just like, I was never freezing. I was just cold a little bit at the very end, but I knew, okay, we're almost done. But... um, Yeah, and after the fact, I have never, I've never experienced that after a race where my teeth were chattering uncontrollably. I was shaking. I was just so depleted food-wise, you know, dehydration-wise. And I think my core, and, and so moving for so long and then you just stop, I think my core temperature just plummeted. And I, you know, I, you know, I was taking a hot shower. I had on a sweatshirt, a jacket, and my teeth were just chattering. And that was probably the most probably concerned <laughs> about my health after an event just because I was like I feel like my body is just shutting down and uh yeah but once I got some food you know that that, that really made all the difference I mean, and, and ate and you know I didn't really have any more of that teeth chattering after but but that was that was probably the roughest you know hour 
post an event ever. Yeah. Well, so when we, we came back to the hotel, because we were just caked in mud, like from the shorts <laughs> down. So we both, both definitely wanted to take a shower. And I could just smell, I felt like I smelled like a dead animal, like that mud smelled. <laughs> and it was just caked on. So we went back to the hotel. I, You took a shower in our room. I went to my parents' room, took a shower. And then uh, when I was getting ready after taking a shower, my dad, our dad, came in and said, uh, Megan does not look good. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of worried because, I mean, at that point, I really felt fine other than my, my feet and just kind of seeing the horror that they looked like. But see, I don't know what, what was different, but I think I maybe ate more than you. But I also don't think I was steady drinking water all day. Mm-hmm. And I know you you were dehydrated early on, and I don't think I was ever dehydrated. But yeah, I was extremely dehydrated on like about twenty. Yeah, and that we still had a long way to go. But oh man, well, I don't know. I don't know what our next adventure will be. But um, you were already texting this morning about another fifty miler, and I'm like, I no, I can't. <laughs>